Well, good evening, family and joy. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, and we will, yes, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, to those joining us via Facebook Live, this is the People's Baptist Church, located in the heart of Southwest Philadelphia at 5039 Baltimore Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19143 where the Reverend Eric Jadalyn Good is senior pastor. And we come to remind you that God is still in control, that God is fully available. And if you trust and never doubt, our God will surely bring you out. God be praised. Praise the Lord. 
Glory be to God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing songs unto him. And talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous works. For he is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. And he has remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Father God, we give you all the honor, the power, the glory, and the praise, Lord God. And we ask that you send your sweet Holy Spirit and activate the sweet Holy Spirit within us, Lord God. We ask for your presence, Lord God. We need your presence, Lord God. We desire and we crave your presence, Lord God, on this most holy of weeks and on this most holy of Thursdays, Lord God. We ask that you illuminate our hearts and our minds to the scripture, and we ask that you give us a right mind and spirit to worship you. And that as we break the bread and drink the wine, Lord God, that we see you, Lord Jesus, in it. That we see the body that was broken for us, Lord God. That we see the very scars in your hand, Lord God. Your people are calling on your name now, Lord God. And Father, we ask for your presence. Holy Spirit, we ask for the fire of your presence. And Father God, this we all pray in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen. To God be the glory for all of the wonderful things that he has done. That would be good if, it were, if I was asking for myself. I said to God be the glory. Amen. Come on, come on. I know we're few in number. To God be the glory for all of the wonderful, wonderful things that he has done. Today's reading will be, tonight's reading will be from the book of Luke. That's Luke 22. That's Luke 22. Beginning at verse 7. When you have that, say Amen. And it reads as follows. Then came the day of the unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover meal for us that we may eat it. Then asked him, then they asked him, where do you want us to make preparations for it? Listen, he said to them, when you have entered the city, a man carrying in a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house he enters and say to the owner of the house, the teacher also asks you, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs already furnished. Make preparations there for us. So they went and found everything he had said and everything he had told them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When the hour had come, he took his place at the table. Somebody say he took his place at the table. And the apostles with him, he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat the Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took up a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not eat or drink the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another which one of them it could be who would do this. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. Amen. Good evening, church. Amen. To those who are here and to those who are joining us online, on behalf of our pastor, Reverend Eric Jalen Good, the pulpit staff, and the members of the People Baptist Church, we'd like to welcome you to the People's Baptist Church. We pray that this won't be your last time, and we hope that you enjoy yourself. So once again, we say we welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you three times in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And let all the people of God say amen. Come on, let all the people of God say amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise and glory. We celebrate the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we come on this evening to celebrate one of the holiest of days that leads up to uh, one of the greatest days in history. And that is the resurrection of our Lord. But in order to get there... It's important that we travel these moments and reflect upon what Christ has done. And so tonight, those who are watching me primarily through uh, live streaming and those who are here, I pray that your spirits will be prepared to receive the presence of God and the word of God, which is the essential moment of any worship expression. Uh, but I came with a particular task. And that task is to certainly put into your hearts and your minds that ministry requires financial support. Amen. And so for those, I have put baskets on the side for those who are present. Um, I'm going to ask if you can today, I'm going to do it, start an offering off with 50. And if you can follow behind whatever you can, the baskets will be on your left or your left and your right and my left and your my right whatever you want to call it <laughs> I got I done, I done got confused <laughs> y'all forgive me but I'm going to ask that you would do your very best if you can after this service to now for those who watch me on live stream those who watch me on live stream I'm going to ask you can download Giveify and you can not only download, download Give It a Five, but look for the People's Baptist Church and you can select an amount that you want to give and it will certainly come and you'll receive a receipt. Again, thank you to all of those who desire to give. Shall we pray together? Loving God, we thank you for this moment to worship you. We ask, dear God, now that you will bless the gift and the giver as well, let this offering be to the praise and the glory of your name. And God, if you do this, we'll give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the church say amen. Clap your hands and give God praise. Um, um, and so since the choir, the musicians are playing that, uh, we're going to let the choir, if that's okay, if y'all can go ahead, just want to praise you. And then after that, I'm going to ask that Reverend Mason Bland will give us the intercessory prayer. And I'll come on back and give you all the introduction of our preacher.
you've done for me. Blessings and glory and honor, they all belong to you. I just want to say thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Can I say it one more time? I just want to thank you forever and ever and ever. For all you've done for me. Yes, sir. Brought me from Poughkeepsie down to Philadelphia. Blessings and glory yes. and honor. Yes. They are. <laughs> to you thank you Jesus for bless oh bless me hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually. I said his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I'm gonna behave myself. Behave myself. Behave myself. Yes, sir. I've been asked to do the prayer. And I'm gonna do the prayer. Yes, sir. But if y'all keep playing with me, y'all keep playing with me though. Yes, sir. I feel a shout coming on in a, just a few seconds. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me. for saving me thank you Jesus how you brought me over thank you Jesus for how you seen me through danger seen and unseen I just want to say thank you oh father before we ask you for anything we want to thank you for everything Thank you for how you've been so good to us and that you've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We just want to say thank you. If tonight be our last night, at least it's our last night in the house of the Lord. And that we have this opportunity to give your name, the praise, glory, and the honor that you're worthy of. But Lord, we want to intercede on the behalf of those who are unable to pray for themselves right now. We want to stand in the gap, Lord, just to say, make a way that you've made so many times before. We pray, oh God, that you just continue to bless this service. We pray, oh God, that you continue to bless the woman of God as she brings forth the word of God for the people of God. We pray, oh God, that you be with the man of God that you have saw fit to call to lead this house. And Lord, we pray, oh God, that you be with every member of the People's Baptist Church. We pray, oh God, that you be with every bereaved family. We pray, oh God, that you be with every member that's experiencing sickness. We understand, oh God, that you are the healer, oh God. That the doctors have some say, but you've got the final say. So, Heavenly Father, we come with a spirit of expectation. 
believing you to do what some deem impossible. But Lord, there's nothing that's impossible for you. So Lord, we stand tonight ready to receive a word tonight. We stand, Lord God, sitting ready to prepare to get our hearts ready to be fed the word of God. Lord, it's been a rough week, but Heavenly Father, we come, Lord, expecting you to move like you've never moved before. So have your way on today, oh God. Move like you've never moved before. It doesn't matter. We don't need a whole packed church to have church. Come on here. But Lord, we need you to move right now in the name of Jesus. And we'll be so careful. Eh to give your name the praise glory. I feel something here tonight give your name the praise glory and the honor that you're worthy of it's in Jesus name we pray and for his sake and the people of God said amen, 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 amen. come on and clap your hands and give God praise and glory hallelujah we are certainly grateful to God uh, to be in God's presence tonight and to be among the brothers and sisters now for those who are scattered in the sanctuary just look back and look around you and wave at your neighbor and say i'm glad to see you yeah 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 and those who are watching me online just say i'm glad to be here yeah whether it's on virtual space i'm glad to be here now, brothers and sisters, we come to the most important part. We don't delay worship uh, because one of the most important parts of our worship expression is the proclamation of the gospel. And we have a profound, prolific preacher that will grace this pulpit tonight in the person of the Reverend Dr. Valerie Andrews, who is the senior pastor of the Eternal Life Baptist Church. Come on, clap your hands for the woman of God. God. listen she does not need she does not need fancy introductions because she will introduce herself and so I'm going to ask that our voices with uh, will give us something profound and, and in terms of a selection and after that I want you both in person and online to receive the ministry of the Reverend Dr. Valerie Andrews. Now, do me a favor, stretch a hand to the preacher and say, Preacher, preacher. Preach. Preach. Preacher. preacher, preach, preach, preacher, preacher. you better preach. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. Put your hands together with me.
Jesus. Not just one, y'all. Come on, y'all. Every praise is to our God. God, we just want to thank you for allowing us to come tonight and to be with you and to your esteemed pastor. Pastor Good, thank you for the invitation. Let us pray. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope let my will be lost in thine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The story is told of how David, who was living in Roslyn, New York, on the north side of Long Island, which is where his children were raised. He would drive into Manhattan every day to meet Bert, his friend, at a famous music office on the sixth floor where they together wrote music. Hal's was a rock and roll house where each of his kids had a band that practiced there. It was hard for him to find somewhere quiet to work, so he would drive into town slowly, which would give him the opportunity to think and get ideas. He would write in his head during the ride. In writing the verses, Hal discovered that he needed to be able to write about what the world did not have. He needed to be able to compare the verses with something as it had nothing to do with the person he was talking to, God. He said, Lord, we don't need another mountain. There are mountains and hillsides enough to climb. There are oceans and rivers enough to cross, enough to last until the end of time. Lord, we don't need another meadow. There are cornfields and wheat fields enough to grow. There are sunbeams and moonbeams enough to shine. Oh, Lord, listen if you want to know. He said, what the world needs now is love, sweet love. It's the only thing that there's just a little of. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. No, not for some, but for everyone. Take a look around you. Think about your immediate family. Consider your extended family. Can you picture your co-workers or maybe your friends? What about the man or the woman you saw lying on the bench or perhaps begging as you stopped at that red light? What about the children you see every day playing in the street? Have you noticed your next door neighbor? What about Russia, 
Ukraine, and maybe even Will Smith. Consider the numerous shootings taking place in the city. Would you agree with me that the world needs love? As we reflect on this communion table that is before me, it's an example of love. Our text this evening is a simple scripture that we're all familiar with. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but will have everlasting life. For a few minutes, I want to lift up the thought What's love got to do with the table? When we hear the word love, many thoughts come to mind. Often we think about our last girlfriend, or I mean our first girlfriend or our first boyfriend. Maybe our first kiss or a wedding, Valentine's Day, exchanging gifts, flowers, chocolate candies, going to the movies or maybe walking hand in hand at the park. Love is a word that has many definitions and different meanings for humanity. Webster defines love as strong affection for another arising out of kinship or personal ties. It's described as attraction based on sexual desire, the object of attachment. It's devotion or admiration. It's a term of endearment. This type of love is romantic. But I didn't come to talk about romantic love tonight. I came to talk about a different type of love that's eternal and that will last forever. And we call that agape love. It's defined as brotherly love and affection. It's goodwill. It's love and benevolence. This kind of love is God's love. Agape love is the love that you and I must possess and exhibit to a dying world. Agape love is a love that you and I must live every single day if we are to win souls to Jesus Christ. Agape love is the love we must practice if the world is to be delivered from darkness. As a backdrop, in chapter 3 of John, Jesus is having a conversation with Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin. Nicodemus was the one who came to Jesus by night, perhaps not wanting anyone else to know about it. Commentators suggest that perhaps this was a good time for both he and Jesus to meet because they probably might have been busy during the day. But regardless of how this conversation ensued, the Bible says he came to Jesus. Here is a man who is a Jew, a leader of the Jews, and a teacher of the law. He knew a lot, but came to Jesus to ask about the signs Jesus did, suggesting God had to be with him. After some discussion, Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. You must be born from above because no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of spirit. This somewhat confuses Nicodemus because he's thinking about a natural birth. And almost sarcastically, Jesus responds, are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things? He says, if I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. What's love got to do with all this, saints? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but will have everlasting life. Who is this God? He's the one who separated darkness from light and said, let there be light. And there was light. Who is this God? The one who created heaven and earth. He's the one that created the grass and the herb yielding seeds, and he did the trees. God is the one who made light to be a sign for seasons, days, and years. This is God. He is the one who made the stars and placed them in the heavens. He created moving creatures, birds, whales, and every living creature in the waters. This is God. 
Who is God, you ask? He's the one who made cattle, creeping things, and beasts of the earth. And if that wasn't enough, he created male and female, you and I, in his own image. This is who God is. Our God is the one and the only one who took the world out of nothing and made it into something. But then something happened. The man God created, Adam, was given permission to eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden with the exception of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. This was to signal Adam's perfect obedience. See, God had warned him what the repercussions would be if he broke the covenant by eating the fruit. However, Adam destroyed the relationship by disobeying God. It was severed. It was cut off. It was split. It was divided. It was torn. It was separated and it was disconnected. So God made a decision that exceeds any type of human love. What's love got to do with this? God stepped in. He didn't have to do it, but he did. And when he stepped in, he didn't come empty handed. But he came and presented a plan that would reconcile us back to God's self. After creating a perfect world for an unperfect people, God demonstrated his love for us in that he gave. He gave you and I his very best. He gave us all that he had. He gave up. He relinquished. He let go. He turned over his son in exchange for you and me. And why did he do it? Because he couldn't look on sin. There had to be a mediator. There had to be a go-between. See, God bestowed the gift of Jesus to become our go-between so that we could get back to him. The prophet Isaiah said, all of us have become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, he said, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. Paul said, there is no one righteous, no, not one. That's what love's got to do with it. See, God presented his son in exchange for our wicked ways because there was nothing good in us, and only Jesus could make the sacrifice for us through a broken body and shed blood. That's what love has to do with it. God delivered voluntarily what belonged to him, his very own son, Jesus the Christ, who paid the wages for our sin. That's what love has to do with it. Are you still asking what's love got to do with the table? Well, let me tell you. God did all of this so that if anyone would believe in his son, not only would one blessing occur, but two. First, so that everyone who believed, who had confidence in him, would not perish. They would not be destroyed or lost. And secondly, that they may have eternal life. In other words, though we would die a physical death, If we believe in his son, Jesus Christ, we will live spiritually forever and ever and ever and ever. We would have life eternal. That's what love has to do with it. I'm excited about this kind of love. I'm excited about God's love. I'm excited because he did this for you and he did it for me. That's what love has to do with it. I'm grateful to God for his love. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I think about all the things I've done, all the places I have gone, and all the things I have said, and in spite of every one of them, God gave love, Jesus the Christ, for me. Somebody said, the Lord has been good to me. That's what love has to do with it. I shared with your pastor a few weeks ago, I was here on Sunday, April 27, 2003, for your Women's Day, and it was the day after my mother transitioned. And I stood here behind the sacred desk, and I remember asking for your prayers because I didn't know how I was going to get through it. 
But when I think about how love Jesus showed up, and when I think about how love Jesus is standing up right now, I am reminded of a song that my mother would always play. Lord, I know you've been so good. Lord, I know you've been so good. You watched over me all night long. Lord, I know you've been so good. Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice of love, was sacrificed for you and me, and he has been good to us. So as we come to the table tonight, let us remember that's what love has to do with it. See, there are many walking around longing to be loved. And for those who are viewing us on Facebook, perhaps you might know of someone in a relationship who is looking for love. There are many hurting just to be loved. There are children seeking love from their parents. There are spouses seeking love from one another. There are siblings crying out to be loved. People are committing suicide because they want to know they are loved. Many are excusing the pain that they are incurring because they are searching for love. If you are under the sound of my voice and you've ever felt as if you were not loved, if you ever wanted to be loved, if you ever wondered would anybody love you, I stop by to tell you on this Monday, Thursday, you can experience the love of God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, because this is what love has to do with it. God loves you just the way you are. And he wants you to experience real love through Jesus Christ, his son. That's why he gave up his son. You want to know how I know this type of love that no one can give but the Lord? Think about the beating he took for us. Think about the crown of thorns placed on his head for us. Think about the wounds found in his hands on account of us. Think about all those who spat on him like us. Think about his being mocked. That's what love has to do with it. Think about the spear that went into his side on our behalf. Think about the nails pounded in his feet instead of our own feet. Think about the blood that he shed for the payment of our sins. As you prepare your heart to come to the table, you need to know this is what love is all about. If you're questioning God's love for you, take a look around you. Look at the wonders he has created. Look at how he has blessed you. Think about this table that is spread so elegantly before you. Knowing that God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved, love has everything to do with the table. More than anything else, God wants you to be his child and to experience his love. People's Baptist Church, reflect on all the things you've gone through during these past two years, or maybe just today. But you know what? You made it through. Take a good look in the mirror to acknowledge that you are still here. God has demonstrated his unfailing love towards us, and God has kept us. God has provided for us, and he has given us his son. The Lord has kept us from danger seen and unseen. The Lord has kept us from the tricks of the enemy. The Lord has kept us clothed and in our right mind. The Lord has been gracious to us. The Lord has made ways out of no ways for us. The Lord has kept his promises to us. The Lord didn't bring us a mighty long way, but he brought us all the way. The Lord has been kind to us. The Lord has been preserving us. The Lord keeps on giving to us life, health, and strength. But the ultimate gift was his son. This is what love has to do with it. What kind of love in the world is this, church? It's a remarkable love. It's an amazing love. It's a love that's undeniable, incredible, sustainable, Available, non-negotiable, indescribable, inconceivable, unbelievable, unchangeable, and is unconditional. 
One Sunday, a little boy looked up at his dad and he asked, Daddy, how does God love us? His father answered, Son, God loves us with an unconditional love. The lad thought for a moment and then he said, Daddy, what kind of love is unconditional love? <laughs> After a few minutes of silence, his father answered, do you remember the two boys who used to live next door to us and the cute little puppy they got last Christmas? Yes. Do you remember how they used to tease it, throw sticks at it, and even rocks at it? Yes. Do you also remember how the puppy would always greet them with a wagging tail and would try to lick their faces? Well, that puppy had unconditional love for those two little boys. They certainly didn't deserve his love for them because they were mean to him, but he loved them anyway. The father then made his point. God's love for us is also unconditional. Men threw rocks at his son, Jesus the Christ, and they hit him with sticks. They even killed him, but Jesus loved them anyway. Saints, I just stopped by to tell you that Jesus loves us regardless of what we have done, what we're going to do, and what we're doing right now. He loves us anyway. That's what love has to do with it. Pastor Good, I keep asking myself, Lord, how can you love me so? But when I think about the table and that he loves me unconditionally, it's an absolute love and not subject to any special terms or conditions. See, we don't have to get ourselves together to come to him. You and I don't have to be perfect to come to him. We don't have to clean up our lives first to come to him. You and I don't have to speak eloquently to come to him. We don't have to know the Bible inside out to come to him. You and I don't have to have certain clothes to wear to come to him. He says, come. Just come. Love is at this table. That's what the table is all about. As we come to this table, let us remember the unconditional love God granted us through the death, burial, and resurrection of our soon coming King, Jesus the Christ. Love is at this table, and his name is Jesus. Remember that our debt has been paid in full by love who is at the table, and his name is Jesus. Come to the table, my sisters and brothers, because love is at this table and his name is Jesus. It doesn't matter who you are, where you are from, where you think you might be going, just come to the table. If your relationship tonight with God is severed, cut off, been destroyed, divided, split, torn, disconnected, Come to the table because love is at this table and his name is Jesus. This is what love has to do with it. If I could sing, I would say, oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you and me. What's love got to do with the table? Let the people of God say amen. Amen. Wow. Shall we stand? Ah, I'm singing. Oh, how I love oh, how I love him. Oh, oh, how I love him. Singing. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Yes, because. Thank you, Jesus. Just sing it again. Sing it. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, how I love him. Sing it. Oh, oh how I love him. Sing it. Oh, oh yes. Because the invitation is extended to those who are on watching me online. There is no better gospel presentation than what we've heard tonight. And so the simple appeal is this. If you want to get to know Jesus for yourself, just type in the section. I want to know Jesus. That, that's all you got to do. This great preacher has traced and talked to us about the meaning of God's love personified through the person of Jesus Christ. And so today I invite you to embrace this love, Jesus Christ. We're going to sing it again for you. Give your time. I'm singing oh yes sir oh how I love him singing oh oh yes sir oh how I love him singing oh yes sir oh yes oh be come on church oh I'm singing yes sir you glory Oh, how I love him singing, oh, glory. Oh, how I love him singing, oh, oh, oh. hold it down. Second call is for those who watch me online, may not be a part of a church. The People's Baptist Church and the Eternal Life Baptist Church stands open to you, I'm sure. For you to become part of the family of God. Listen, not a perfect church, but you can become God is working on each and every one of us. So you can come by letter, candidate of baptism, Christian experience. Just say, just type in the section, I want to become part of this church. Or I want to become part of your eternal life, Baptist church, and we'll give you information to direct you in that way. Listen. If you're not a part of a church, come on. Not a part of a community of faith. Just type in a section. Come on. Let's go. I'm singing, oh. Oh, how I love him singing, oh. Oh, how I love him singing, oh. Oh. You may be seated. Oh. I'm singing, yes, sir. Oh, how I love him singing. Oh, oh, how I love him singing. Oh, because just one more time, I'm singing. Oh, how I love him. time because he first loved me thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. 
Come on, let's give God praise for the word of God today. What a beautiful presentation of the gospel. Thank you, Dr. Andrews, for coming and sharing with us. And then it is my hope and prayer that you will consider coming to us again to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. amen. Let us prepare ourselves for the celebration of communion. Our deacons are going to ready themselves. to tell you oh oh the blood of G yes oh of G uh, it'll never lose his power brothers and sisters I need not give a spew or anything because the gospel and the meaning of the communion table was so articulated tonight. The only thing I need to just say to you is this. When we come to the table, let's remember Jesus. Tonight, What a, if no other night, I want you to see Jesus in that upper room. Feel the anxiety that he must be facing, or that he would be facing, as he hmm, would undergo harsh treatment and all of that for you and me. Then, 
do it a self-examination. Lord, is it I? Self-evaluation. Where have I fallen? Where have I messed up? And so as we pray today, let's ask the Lord now for forgiveness and the blessing of the table. Gracious and loving God, we are so thankful for the love that you demonstrated to us through Jesus Christ. Hmm. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your love. We've been searching for love in all the wrong places, all the wrong people. But now we have found love in Christ. Now loving God, forgive us for whatever we have said or done. Forgive us. Create within us a clean heart and renew within us a right spirit. Bless as much of this bread and this cup that we shall use. Let it be meat for our spiritual journey. And loving God will give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. church ah uh, what can make me of Jesus precious is that flow that that makes me white as snow no other found I know I said nothing but the blood oh for my part in this I see pray God nothing but the blood for my cleansing this I bleed White as snow, I said no, no other found. You 
You know, this bread has been playing tricks on me. It's been blending in with the table and I couldn't find it. But for those who have their elements at home, and for those who are here, tonight, as we dine at the table, see Jesus. See his body broken for you and me. Body of the Lord Jesus Christ broken for you and me. Let us eat together. As we continue to dine at this table, let us think about the blood of Jesus. A blood without blemish and without spot. The blood that will never lose its power. Lift your cup. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is poured out for you and me for the remission of sin. Let us commune together. Now there's a song. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign my name. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign my Oh, to know. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood done sign my Oh, the blood don't sign my, oh, oh, the blood, oh, the blood, oh, the blood don't sign my name. Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, you know the blood don't sign my, don't you know, oh, the blood, oh, the blood. Sign my name, all oh, the blood. Yes, sir. Don't sign my all oh, 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 the blood, all oh, the blood, all oh, the blood. Don't sign mine. Don't you know the blood? All oh, the blood, all oh, the blood. Don't sign my. Don't you know all oh, the blood? Oh, the blood, oh, the blood, done sign my name. Oh, the blood, done sign my name. God bless you. Ah, uh, yes. Listen, thank you all who watched online, and thank you to you who came tonight to be with us in this sanctuary. Thank you again to the Reverend Dr. Valerie Andrews for such a powerful, prolific message. Come on, let's give God praise. Thank the Lord. Listen, on tomorrow afternoon, we will gather in this sanctuary again, this same space. Yes, yes. And we will hear the 12 or, oh my goodness. Man. How many? I done gave, gave y'all more work. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be seven. <laughs> I gave y'all a lot of words. <laughs> it's going to be seven tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be favored with the word of God. And so tomorrow, I pray that you will come and be with us in that moment. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and let's ring that selection. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him. Praise Him, all creatures.
treasures here below. Praise Him above. E Loving God, as we go into this world of chaos and misery, we go with the assurance of your love. I pray now for the protection of your people to their destination. We lift up a special prayer for Sister Jerisha. Lord, we trust you to do what only you can do. We commit her to your keeping. Oh God, we thank you. We pray for Sister Loretta Flynn, who is in Presbyterian. Loving God, lay your hand on her and we'll thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray for anybody that's among us or watching us that's going through their own bout of affliction, be with them and guide them and lift their burden and we'll give you thanks now may the love of God and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest rule and abide with you now henceforth and even furthermore we sing it together oh Yes, sir. Huh? One more time, amen. Amen. Go in peace. The Lord be with you.